Welcome into NHL tonight. First shift for a Thursday, October the 24th, 2024. EJ Raddick alongside Kevin Weeks. You're back with us today. Happy After to be a back. Days out. Tony yeah. Granato was here. Yeah, that was Did great. A wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Saw some of that on the air last night. Tony G. We had mm -hmm. Eddie O on a couple mm -hmm. days ago, so we had a good couple days. Good to have you back. Thank and, you. Uh, we got a we got another treat for you. You what know, you JD, our producer, yeah. is getting married. He's yes. Tomorrow with the nuptials. Hey, and that a boy, so JD. we brought in the veteran. Yeah. We brought in the veteran, the Sandman. Wow. Working. Uh, there he is. That a boy, yes. Sandman. Yes. There he is. Wow. Making his debut here on first shift on the air. Great to have him. Sandman. We we want to talk. We want to keep reminding the viewer of where they can consume our. First shift program. Obviously, you can watch it right here, four to five every day Eastern. But also, let's get this graphic. Here. Get the graphic. Got a boy. There. Give there. it That's to it, them. Sandman. That's why he's a veteran. Yeah, I got a boy. Veteroni, as you would say. There you go. So you can see it here. First shift available every day on YouTube as an audio-only podcast, and of course, interviews, select segments, always uploading to multiple platforms. So. Keep an eye out on YouTube, the NHL YouTube page, NHL Network YouTube page. Just subscribe to that, mm -hmm, and exactly. you'll get this stuff all the time. So yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you, Sam, man, for jumping in there today. His debut. Yeah, welcome. I love it. Welcome. To the Nash. To the Nash. Yeah, all right. Hey, speaking of the Nash, how, how about the Washington Capitals? Ooh. Last night, five in a row. Yeah. Dusted the Flyers for the second consecutive night. Yes. Back to back. And they just, uh, you know. They're rolling right now, the Washington Capitals. What a great start. They look great to me. You're exactly right. Nick Dowd's played well. Chikrin. I mean, we can go up and down the list. Strom. It's been good. Goaltending has been really good as well. Connor McMichael's played well. But you know what? Probably the great eight getting on the board, too. But what probably impressed me most about the Meads is their goal differential. Yeah. Plus eight. Last year, it was a bit of a struggle for them in terms of that goal differential. But nonetheless, a successful season and a rebuild getting to the playoffs this year. Plus eight, second best in the Eastern Conference in terms of goal differential right now. Yeah, they've got some some additions they've added to the yeah. mix there. When you think about adding uh, Pierre Luc Dubois mm -hmm. and adding Jacob Chikrin, I mean those are high end players. And you know what else they are? They're big, strong yeah. guys who can skate. They can shoot the puck. Chikrin on the blue line, and Dubois up front to giving that team more depth throughout their lineup. I mean, got to give the Capitals a lot of credit for going out and taking some shots there. Some guys. I mean, Dubois. It was a, it's been a struggle for him, but you don't get great players when they're when they're not when they're you know when they're underachieving, let's say, or they're right. struggling. That's when they become available. Yeah. Sometimes you have to take a chance. Absolutely, it's a great opportunity for him. He fits yeah. in with where they are right now in I think terms so. of their makeup. Yeah. Can add some speed, add some skills. You said add size. Yeah. Uh, and we can kind of complement that group, and offsets the loss of a guy like Mantha, who was long, rangy. Yeah. yeah. Good hands, good mid, skilled player, but also a guy like Manjapani too. Yeah, add him to that mix. Another one, yeah. You know, he's a good four-check player, very skilled, can, can complement, can score absolutely. So I like what they did in the offseason. As we always say, it's tough to win the Stanley Cup by only hitting singles in the front office. That's right. Sometimes you got to swing for the fences. Maybe you get a triple, maybe a stand-up double, but you got to swing. Yeah. You can't bunch your way to winning a Stanley Cup no, final. You can't. And you're right, they had a really undercover. Very effective, good offseason. Yeah, so a great start for the Washington Capitals. And for the Flyers, last year they got every. Remember last year, the start of the season, the Flyers were, they were hard to deal unreal. with. They played really good hockey for yes. the first maybe two thirds of the season. Yeah. They were a playoff team. Yeah. And then it kind of fell apart down the stretch. They had the goaltending issues. Obviously, mm -hmm. Carter Hart had the personal issues. He was mm -hmm. out of the mix and is out of the mix now. Urson has played well in goal, but it was Fedotov last night. He has struggled, you know, playing the position, right? When you're when a team feels their goaltending is a little suspect, all of a sudden it makes it hard for everything else to happen. And right now the Flyers are struggling. Yeah, they're struggling right now. It's tough because last year I thought as a team they were even better defensively. Yeah. And of course we know they made some of those trades down the stretch last yeah. year with Walker and, and others. But all that to say, they need to kind of tighten it up a little bit. They're kind of wide. They're wide. There's a lot of plays happening through the middle of the ice. But with that, you need saves. Mm -hmm. And right now, they're not getting as many of the saves. Fedotov can be better, needs to be better, and needs to establish himself here at the NHL level. Well decorated in the KHL. Very talented, but needs to get a little bit of traction here at the NHL level. And once he can lock his game in, Urson, as you mentioned, has played well. But they need both guys going. That's a team that can't necessarily score their way out of trouble. So they really need some solid team D and some solid goaltending. And how about Mitchkoff, Matt Bay Mitchkoff, the young guy? He's Sweet. coming out as advertised. Oh, yeah. Right? Playing really well for a young player. Big time. Composed, wants the puck, shows that authority and the skill when he's in possession of the puck. He can make plays. 
And, and what I like so far is he's dictating a lot of the play, too. Unselfishly, yeah. but he's dictating. He's not just deferring because he's in the show. Uh, I'm in the, in the NHL. i got to defer. i got to pass. Yeah. He looks very convinced of his own skill set when he's in possession of the puck. I love watching him play. I love the fact that they got him over. And you know, one other thing, after the game last night, John Tortorella was asked, he had, you know, he think, you know, you know what, you've been of on course. the bench, yeah. right? Played for you Torts, get emotional. Like, yeah. these guys are trying to win, and when things aren't going well, he got into it a little bit with Nick Sealer, mm -hmm. and afterwards he was asked about it, and like, I totally agree with his take on it. It's like, hey, listen, we're, we're, these things happen. Mm -hmm. We're men competing in the moment. We're trying to correct things, trying to make it better. He goes, I love Nick Sealer, and I know he does. Yeah, for sure. And so it was just interesting, though. Every time there's like, we had this whole thing up with Montgomery yeah, and with, with Marshan, right? Yeah. This stuff happens. Yeah. The guys are competitive. The coaches are competitive. It's not maybe as big a deal as, as sometimes we think. Yeah, it's not always a big deal. Sometimes, yeah. as he said, it's just a course within the course of the realities of the pressure cooker that is elite level pro sports. Yeah. It's the highest level in the world. And Let's make, hey, we feed our families from pro sports. This yeah. isn't like recreation. Yeah. We're nope, just hanging right. out. You know, we're just playing open skate. This is real. It's legit. There's a lot on the line. And also, if you're a winning coach like John Tortorella and you have that winning pedigree, you come there, yeah, we're in a rebuild, sure, but hey, we want to win games. Yeah. We're not just lining up. And we're yeah. representing the city of brotherly love, too. Yep. There's a pressure and a, and a responsibility that goes with that. So I totally understand. Yeah, so uh, that was last night. Yeah. We got a good slate tonight. We got nine games, including a great rematch from last year's Eastern Conference Final, mm. the New York Rangers, Big. who have been lights out good so far, 5-0-1 on the season. Really get they're getting the jump early in games, the Rangers. I mean, they're outscoring their opponents 12 to 3 in the first period this season. Taking on the Florida Panthers. Panthers, uh, the Stanley Cup champions. You can see last year there was six game series. Three of those games went to overtime. We got Bobrovsky, we got Shesterkin tonight, we got MSG week C. Should be a good one. Yeah, it's gonna be a big one. These are the games, let's say if you're the New York Rangers. We're flying this year. We're on home ice. We've got last change. Everything's going well for us. A bit of a statement game. Mm -hmm. Because the Florida Panthers have been the last two cups and they won. Last, they're the defending cup champs. That's right. Those are the games now, like tonight, if I'm the Rangers, you want to come out and try to dictate. You want to come out and use the fact that you're on home ice and you have that last change. And maybe dictate the pace a little bit, especially in the absence of Barkov, who's nearing his return. Yeah. And conversely, if you're the Florida Panthers, hey, we've beaten you in the playoffs. We're the defending cup champs. Not that we're going to rest on our laurels, but we want to reinforce why. Yeah. We want to come out and yeah. win this game at the world's most famous arena and almost make it a statement game for us yep. to plant the seeds of doubt in your minds about the fact that you can't beat us should we, should we match up again in the postseason. Yeah, and the, the Panthers are coming off a rough outing at home. They get yeah. beat up by the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, the Wild also handled off, them. Also off to a good start this season. Haven't trailed through six games so far this season. But, uh, you know, Florida this year, they played Boston twice, another team they played in the postseason over the last couple of years, right? And they were without Barkoff and Kachuk for one of those games. The first one was the opener. Both guys played in that game, but Florida beat them twice. Yeah. So Florida's keenly aware of who is on the schedule, and for the Rangers, as are they, right? This is the time. Send that message early that, hey, not this year. You got that right. Psychology is almost everything in sports. Yes, it's the refined motor skills, the ability to make plays, the tenacity, the toughness, the endurance, and all. for sure. But I can tell you from experience, so much of the game and so much of sports, especially pro sports, are psychological. And if you can reinforce a psychological advantage on a club, or if you can gain one and kind of reverse it a little bit, that, that swings heavily, not only in your favor, but just in your sense of belief in the group. Because you don't want it to be, here we go again, man, we yeah. can't beat these guys. Yeah. We played our A game, it wasn't good enough, we lost 3-2, we lost 4-1. You don't want that to be the case. When you come out with that victory, in the dressing room, cue the music, hit the victory, the, the victory song. Yeah. That's a completely different feeling. Yeah, and you know, for the Rangers, uh, and I was really happy to see him get a nice goal the other night. Mika Zibanejad, I yeah, think that he's was really nice. such a key player. When I think about the Rangers and people say, can they win the Stanley Cup this year? Because we know they're good. We know they're going to be there, barring anything unforeseen mm -hmm. towards the end. They're going to be a, a, a factor to try to win a Stanley Cup. I just think, you know, in those head-to-heads, like Mika has to be a difference maker. Like eventually Barkoff will be back. Let's say you meet Florida again in the postseason. Mika's got to be at five on five. He's got to be as good or better than those guys he's got to match up against. 
Have you seen it? Like, I, I liked what I saw out of Mika the other night against Montreal. Came up the ice, took a nice pass, just goal. buried it. Mm -hmm. He needs to be a five-on-five -five factor much more often this season. For sure. And I think a big part of that are two things. Number one, him using his speed because he's a faster player than he looks. You yep. know this. When you oh, see him yeah. at ice level versus TV, he's much faster in person at game speed than it translates to on it TV. And with stick. Correct. Yep. And number two, shoot. Every time I see him, I'm like, Bro, just shoot. Yeah. You know, <laughs> don't ask shot. questions. He has shot. a great shot in that. Same goal you're referencing in Montreal, no chance for the goaler on that. He should be averaging the way they possess the puck. To me, anything less than five to seven shots a game is too light for him because he can impact the game. He's, really, he's not a, a volume shooter, per se, with his ability to shoot. Yeah. He can blow it by or blow it through or past anybody. Yeah, and that was a great rush they had against the other night. It was nice. Adam Fox just made a beautiful play, great. beat it up. Mm -hmm. Mika finished, so uh, we'll see how it makes out tonight. I'm headed over to the Garden for Rangers nice. and Panthers. Really looking forward to that one. We got an emotional one, perhaps, mm -hmm. coming up in Toronto yes. with uh, Craig Berube, mm -hmm. now the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, coaching against his former team, the St. Louis Blues. Of course, he was a Stanley Cup champion with the Blues. There's Chief with the cup held high that back in Boston in 2019 and relieved of his duties last December. Now takes over as the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Been off to kind of an up and down start. I think more good than bad. Yep. Four and three. I'd say. Good news is he gets Joseph Wall back tonight. He's missed uh, the entirety of the season thus far, but he is going to start and goal for the Leafs tonight. Give me the, the feeling when a coach comes back to play, you know, because it's different when a player, right? Yeah. Like, were you in those situations in your career when – a coach it was like a big game because a coach was facing a former team oh yeah for sure I've had that numerous times had that numerous times with Peter Laviolette and other head coaches yeah better be some money on the board for the fellas <laughs> from Chief because Chief got that new deal he's well, which compensated. He's, he's well compensated well compensated and, he, and Chief knows we yeah. love him so uh, and a long time over a thousand games in this league played 17 whatever years he's yeah. had an excellent playing career in his role as well so he understands the dynamic there's gonna be some juice there He'll give a little incentive to the boys maybe as well. And Joseph Wall being back in the net, Big a St. Louis kid. Everybody wow. back yeah. home's watching, all your family, More all your friends. More money on the board. Yeah. So you got to get some of that from him. But he makes his long-anticipated season debut coming back from injury against and, his hometown team. And, you know, the Leafs, uh, they got to be jacked up because yeah. they just got just hammered in Columbus the other night in the second back-to-back. Back -to -back. This is third. This is the third game in four days for Toronto. Mm -hmm. They've started off with a lot of games on the schedule, as several teams have, because we're going to have it a little bit condensed this year with yes. the Four Nations tournament going to take place mm -hmm. in uh, February. But I think I like what I'm seeing from the Leafs so far. Do you Are you in, in concert with me on that, or more, you have more worries? No, you and I talked about it the other night, post-shows, respectively, and I would say this about the Leafs. You are getting the first-hand recipe, and every team has their overall individual recipe for what it takes to get to the cup or win it, but there's a lot of stuff that's inarguable. And when Chief comes and he's like, hey, boys... Here's the recipe. Yeah. We need to sprinkle in some of this, two yeah. tablespoons of that. To their credit, for the most part, they're starting doing it. In this game specifically, I'll tell you, against Tampa each. That was a good look. That was Monday night. That was complete. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. as John Shannon told me, that was their best game, maybe in years, their most complete game. And then the night in Columbus. Was not. Yeah. They, was they, not. They, they deviated from a lot of those same things that they've been doing so well. Yeah. So I think it's going to continue to be a work in progress. You and I spoke about that. But they're on the right track. It's just about the buy into those things. And hey, guess what? When Chief pulls that ring out and he shows them that Stanley Cup ring, there's no doubting that. Yeah. There's no doubting it. Yeah. So they have the guys that have the aptitude, the hockey IQ to be able to make the changes. They've started, and I like where they're going, but it's just about continuing to buy into those things to where those things become part of their everyday, yes. their everyday DNA as a club. Does yeah, that make sense? And, and, yeah, absolutely. And just quickly on the flip side for the Blues, no Robert Thomas. He's going to be out a couple months with Tough a fracture ankle. So that's unfortunate. They got off to a pretty good start at 4-3. and three. They'll be eager yeah. probably to say hello. To their, because, you know, not yeah. everybody is happy and, and singing a song about their former coach, right? Right, right. So there'll be guys, some of those guys in that room will be like, hey, tough stuff. Well, well <laughs> get, to your point, and this is a home game for guys like Robert Thomas. He's an Ontario well, he's kid. he's out, though. He's out, yeah. right? So yeah. he, so, but 
you know what I was saying. Yeah, and then Jordan Cairo. Yeah. Jordan Cairo's from there. Yeah. Toronto area kid, known his dad since I was young, and his, yeah. his, his grandpa and his family. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe for some of those players, hey, okay, Chief, you're on the other side. We won a cup with you, yeah. but now it's our turn. Yeah. Now it's our turn. We want to kind of show what we can do uh, and do it in a new direction. So, look, I think at the end of the day, the St. Louis Blues, as we talked about right here in the studio, mm -hmm. I think they're going to be a team that makes some noise in the Western Conference. Yeah. A disruptor. No, they're yeah. bubble team, yeah. but they're a disruptor. They could very well get in each. Yeah. And I'm going to give you one other one. You know where it's a biggie tonight? Jordan Bennington's a Toronto kid, there too. You yeah, there you go. And you're playing at home. Yeah. To me, he's got the inside track as the number one goalie for the Four Nations Cup for Team Canada. Mm. He's my guy All right. going in, barring anything yeah. unforeseen. So you want to stake the claim. Yeah. You want to stake the claim. As much as you want the win, and him and Chief are very close, you want to stake that claim in front of a big audience in All Toronto. Right, I'm write that down. Yeah. Jordan Bennington, yep. Team Canada. That's my week. guy. Yes, Four Nations. All right. All right. With that, yeah. we will take a quick break. All right. You know what's coming up next? Who? The Super Chief, Dan Rose. Oh! Super 16! Who does he have on top? Has he figured it out? Yet? I don't know. We're going to find out. Dan Rose in Super 16 coming up next on First Shift. It is time now for the Super 16 presented by Enterprise, and that means our buddy Dan Rosen from NHL.com. I like to call him the Super Chief <laughs> Nice. NHL.com. Nice. He's the Super All Chief. All right. That's the first time you've called me that. Okay, but okay. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. you got to start somewhere, Dan. All right, so All right. Uh, let's get right to it. You're on the road this time. You're in, you're in New York. You're at the NHL yeah. offices there. As you have a busy day. You're not here today. I miss having you with me. But let's get going. Give us the, the 16 through 13 portion of your list. All right. At number 16, we got the Boston Bruins. You see it's a six-spot drop for the Bruins. And look, I mean, they did lose the game to Nashville. Nashville was bound to win. They also lost to Utah in overtime. Could have knocked the Bruins out, but have to have Utah just one spot ahead. Also a four-spot drop for Utah. You know, they, they won against Boston, followed it up with a 4 nothing loss to Ottawa, who you will see a little bit later. The New Jersey Devils, a six-spot drop. They've allowed 14 goals in the last two games, but maybe with Luke Hughes and Brett Fetch and back, that will help. And Carolina hangs right in there at number 13. They seem to be steady right now, playing exactly what we expect from the Carolina Hurricanes. Steady hockey. They won three of their last four. I uh, can't be too critical with those first four weeks. Okay. Yeah. But you Excellent. know what? Carolina... Did impress oh, me with the way they rallied against the Oilers. Yep. They played That's fewer games, and maybe that works against them here in our, I guess it's week three of uh, the Super 16. But I might have had Carolina up a little higher. Yeah, me too. I, I love Carolina's squad. They're one of the fastest, if not the fastest team in the league. And they certainly showed that speed in the game you're referencing up in Edmonton. Marty Natchez. Uh, Marty Natchez I like was that. Absolutely. Yeah, great. I just like how you say I would have them higher. You haven't even seen the other teams yet. yet all right. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying. The I, teams I, you haven't seen yet. All right. Let's, you know? let's go. Saying, all right. You know? All right. I'll all give right. you that. I'll give you that. Okay. Let's move on. He doesn't really respect That's the Canes that much. Check, no, I mean, check no. mark in uh, my yeah. spot right okay. there. I got the Tampa Bay Lightning. Look, I mean, a couple of losses, I understand, for the Lightning right there. But, you know, 15 goals against the last five games. Got to clean it up a little bit. I still like the Lightning, and then they had the 8-5 win against the New Jersey Devils, so they were able to put the puck in the net. The Toronto Maple Leafs, they, they beat the Lightning, so they're ahead of the Lightning right now. That's why they're there, but they bracketed with a loss to the Rangers and a bad one against Columbus, but they beat the Lightning. Got to have them there. It is a drop. Ottawa, big, big step up for the Ottawa Senators here. Six spots they've moved up. They beat Utah. They beat Tampa. They did lose to New Jersey, but I like the start the Senators are having right now. Uh, and this is without Linus Olmark in net, too. Anton Forsberg was really good the other night. And then Vegas, a drop for Vegas as well. They did beat the Kings, a couple of losses. Florida in overtime, lost to Tampa. Uh, but Vegas, a little bit, I couldn't drop them too much. I guess, but, you know, they dropped four spots. You know, we see they say mm. you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's right. right. Yeah, and if there was ever that. an old dog, yeah. you're looking at him. It's right you. Over there, Dan it's Rosen. you. But, you know, he has finally figured out, like, he's figured me out a little bit. In yeah, that, like, he doesn't have. make the mistake <laughs> of putting teams that beat somebody behind them. See how right. he, he was right. very clever right. there. He had to put Toronto yeah. ahead of Tampa yeah. because they had they, just they recently handled them played. up. Yeah, they handled them. So, I, again, yeah. you can, if you work on it, you can teach an old dog new tricks. So, well, I'm going to ruin your point. Very well done. <laughs> I'm a, 
All right, I'm going to ruin your point here for a second. It's oh. so early in the season yeah. that you do look at the head-to-heads a lot more than I'm going to look at the I head-to-head. I always do. I always do. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to look at the head-to-head from October when we're doing this in January. Well, all right? that so makes sense. We, yeah. we in have, the moment. We're so the early in the season, so the head-to-heads are a lot easier to look at right okay. now than they, yes, are, they are. We're We have a lot more. To look at All later right. on down the road. All right. All right. Let's get well, on to so the far, next so one. Good here. All right. All right. Here we go. Yeah, well, so I got far, the so Vancouver good. Canucks not ranked last week, but they've won three games in a row. A bit of a market correction. So they, they go from out to in at number eight in the top eight with three wins in a row. The Florida Panthers, a little bit of a drop for the Panthers. Not too heavy, but they listen. They don't look good against Minnesota. They did beat Vegas. They lost to Vancouver. So look at that, right? But no, the Panthers are still ahead of the Canucks because I couldn't put the Canucks in over the Panthers. Can't do it. The Washington Capitals, I can. No, not ranked last week. Six this week. Five wins in a row. But what happens? The Dallas Stars? No, no, no. I can't go Washington from out to top five. So even though Washington got a win over Dallas, DJ, come on. The Dallas Stars are still a, still a top five team. <sighs> Well, maybe, and I knew it was listen, coming. Listen, maybe, there was the sign, maybe, maybe, and you can't teach an old dog. Maybe you tricks. can't. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can. You can lead a dog to water. You can't. I don't know what the sayings are. The horse. Hey. I don't know. We got a lot of animals. Could be the possum. Today. I don't even know. Could be the possum. I don't even know. But yeah, that really. He really fell off a cliff. In yeah, that with that group of four. That was it. With that group of four. I thought that, you would. Washington has won five in a row. They beat yeah. Dallas. That makes perfect sense. Sure. I mean, Florida, by the way, just got stomped yeah. the other night in their own building. Like, we're talking about Carolina. I didn't see the teams. Right, whoa, right whoa, whoa. now, I'd have Carolina ahead of Florida. That's what I'm saying. And he's Florida. got, he had Florida. Van, he had Van where he had them. He had the Canucks where he has them. Yeah. And Carolina's at 16. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Hold on. So, kind of interesting. So hold on. Do you know, That's bookending your account. buddy Jimmy Rutherford right there. Well, let's not bring yes. Jimmy Rutherford into this. Go ahead. Let's I got to take into account the fact that Barkov's been out, and just until last game, Kachuk's been out, too. So those those points matter here for the Florida yeah, Panthers. Yeah, they do. Let's okay. get I'm not saying take on. them out. I'm oh. just saying that seven, seven is a bit yeah, high for a team. When I look at the numbers, they're a minus goal differential right now, minus five. That's unsightly for them. Well said. Let alone no for the defending Stanley no Cup champs. Unsightly. Each. Unsightly. Sightly. He was playing the other night, and they got run out of their own building. So First I, game back from an illness. Come on. All right. All right. Give him a break. Okay. Give him a break. Barkov's Listen, not back you know yet. I love not the back Kachuks. tonight either. Yeah, you know I love the yeah. Kachuks. And I love Matthew. Maybe I mean. it's a little recency because he saw them this morning in the pregame. Skip. That's right. He's probably no, feeling no, no, no. like he's buddy, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Feeling good. He, feeling has, nice. he has a tendency to do yeah, that. Feeling like nice pals. He's, you know, yucking it up with Paul Maurice. Yeah. And I get it. I didn't even, I didn't yeah. even I see it. Matthew Kachuk this morning. Let's go. Anyway. All right. Top four. All right, top four, Calgary Flames. Listen, they keep getting the job done, 5 and one so they stay in the top. But I just love what the Minnesota Wild, the Winnipeg Jets, and the Rangers have been doing. The Wild have not trailed yet in a game. They've been terrific. Marco Rossi's been great in that first-line center spot with Kaprizov and Zuccarello, and Gustafson's been terrific. And you got the Winnipeg Jets, six wins to start the season. Again, getting it from everywhere. But I'm looking at the numbers and the New York Rangers, even at 5-0-1 versus the Jets at 6-0-0, they are more goals, better goal differential, more shots on goal, fewer shots allowed. The, pe- the penalty kill is a little bit better. The-, the power play is really good. So the Rangers are just, the numbers show the Rangers are just a hair better than the Jets, even with that one little blemish on their record. You know, the Where's Jets the have the not? top power play in the NHL, right? Uh, the Jets are, and you know the uh, Jets have only given up ten goals. Yes. The Jets have only given no, up ten good. goals in six they've games. You know that, good. right? Yes, I do. And yeah. the Rangers have scored thirty-one to the Jets twenty-seven. Yeah, the Rangers have only given up twelve. That's true. To the Jets ten. Yeah, yeah. And you know, listen, when you when you can beat the stuffing out of Detroit twice and Montreal, I mean, those are great victories for the Rangers. I'm sure they'll meet those teams on the path to the Stanley Cup this year. That but might you be a conference teams. final matchup. With those but teams. But you gotta beat Dan, those teams. Dan, Dan, Winnipeg a break, Dan. Winnipeg has won all their games, no blemishes, 6 and 0. Live in the now. I yeah, am. the Rangers There's are no good. The, the Rangers, Rangers have been, been great. Better. The Rangers have been great. But what if a 6 and 0 weeks? I don't know what it's gonna take. I don't know what it's gonna take. What do they have to do? Hey, listen, they're living up. They're doing the first three letters of their name win. Win. 
That's it. It's win, win, win the are. peg. And I love the Rangers. Not They're not lost great. a peg right now. They They're playing great. They deserve to be there, but not at one yeah. when there's a six and zero unbeaten I with guess, only ten I goals against. I guess the against. peg. I guess you know. But That's what game's he going to tonight, though? Well, the Rangers. Well, nah, nah, come on. Come on, boy. Come on. Yuck it up with your Come on. Him and the bread right, man probably out place. for dinner last night. Yeah, you saw Drew. You saw Chris yeah. Drury. Spent well, he doesn't. Time with them this Hold morning. on. He, he did. Maybe that's he why he put them at one. He doesn't speak to anybody. So he won't <laughs> yeah. even speak that's to anybody. That's why he probably put them at one, but, though. Yeah, but there it is. I mean, listen. I, I'm, I'm getting hammered by this. Uh, Rangers, okay. all right, all right. The Rangers have been terrific yeah. this year. And awesome. maybe this they is the great. year they're going to win the cup. The President's great. Trophy last year. Great matchup tonight. Florida. And uh, the Rangers at MSG, looking forward to that. Igor and Bob, mm -hmm. love what the Rangers are doing so far. Amazing. But this Winnipeg year. is well, six I... and zero. Oh, they have the best yeah. power play. They've given up ten goals. You're talking about the numbers. They the, the numbers can tell us a lot of things. I just gave you numbers that would favor the Jets. They're six and zero, oh, Dave. Come on, do the I'm right thing at... once in a while. Do the right thing. How about well, let's look at a little goal differential? Plus seventeen, plus nineteen. I'm it's just tight. saying the Jets. It's tight. It yeah. is tight. So you Patty, know, you're telling me the Rangers. Patty said that. How well, about listen. the Rangers penalty kill, which is at 90 points? Right now, this year. right now, as we speak, and we look at the seasons, you're comparing all these numbers, yeah. right? The yeah. Utah Hockey Club didn't roll into Winnipeg and put up a six and beat them in overtime. So that's the only blemish for the Rangers. So if we're gonna, we're we're gonna we're slicing this thin. We are. Gotta right. give we're Winnipeg slice it that unblemished. Way. Yeah. Unblemished. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, because of the first half, the way you treated me in the first half of this Super 16, <laughs> I'm going to let you have your say. I'm not going right. to agree with you, but I'm going to let you okay. have your say in this one. All, All right? right. All right. There he is. <laughs> the super chief of NHL.com. The one and only Dan Rose. You're looking sharp today, Rose. Yeah, I like that. Look sharp. Right. Look I'll sharp. see you later. All, All right. Later. I'll see you at the garden. That's right. All see right. Dan Rosen, get him off my screen. <laughs> when we come back, another great one, the great yeah. eight. Yes. Scores again. Can he catch Gretz this year? Watch we'll Gus next for ship. Super 16 is presented by Enterprise. We are here to keep you moving forward, whether it's around the corner or around the world. Official partner of the NHL. On second thought, mm. Weeksy. Yeah. Uh, we got a little segment here, and like the season starts, right? And we get these first impressions of things. And now a couple more games get played, and then maybe we have a different feeling mm. about some of those sure. things. So, uh, one of our great researchers, Kyle O'Sullivan, came or uh, came up with that. Mm -hmm. So I happy like about that. Thank that you, tip. Kyle. That tip, Kyle. Tip to Kyle. Absolutely. Um, but let's let's get it going, and let's start with with this one, right? Because mm. Alex Ovechkin didn't start great, but a couple goals lately. Alex Ovechkin will not catch Wayne Gretzky this season, but maybe on second thought, he will. It's hard to bet against superheroes, as I say all the time. Yeah. So I had him penciled in for in around 40 this year. Which is close. Which is close. That's that's right around it. So that would then take him into next year, and then he'd need a couple more. But you can't bet against the grade eight. I spoke to him just before the start of the season. He's so dialed in. He's so motivated. He cares. He's His passion level's through the roof. And also, too, Ege, and we could say this, his respect and the mutual respect between him and the great one. Mm -hmm. And the support he's getting from the great one. He just said as much yesterday. Yeah. Hey, when I'm down or if I'm slumping, he texts me, he keeps encouraging, encouraging me. Can you imagine? So, on second thought, maybe he does it. Yeah. Who knows? The way the Caps are playing. They're a plus eight goal differential so far this season. They're played exceptionally well. Yeah, and you can see the numbers here. Inching closer and closer. He's at 855 now. He has two goals in the six games, but two goals in his last three. Right. So moving up the list, we'll see. So maybe. Maybe it's possible, man. Listen, nothing's out possible. of the, with, with this guy. Just seems to remember second half of last year. That's, what a tear. Whoop, took off after yeah. really a, not a good mm. first part of the season. All right, here's another one for you. Okay. The Rangers, first thought, Rangers won't repeat as President's Trophy winners, but now, you know, remember they lost their second game at mm -hmm. home to Utah, but now watching a little bit more, second thought, maybe they, <laughs> maybe they do win the President's Trophy. Why not? Again. Why I, I have them winning the Stanley Cup this year, and okay. I said that from the outset. But All right, there's uh, there, a lot of predictions from you. Too. Yeah, you like that, don't like you? Each? Yeah, I do. But Lafreniere has played well. He's continuing his progression. Yep. Panarin's one of the best players in the world. Shishurkin right now is the best goalie in the world. Uh, Fox looks like himself. He's been great. 
Trocek, who never gets enough love, has been outstanding. All things being equal, they're humming. I like the way their team is humming along right now. Yep. I like all phases of their game. As you can see, the numbers reflect that. From the power play to the goals against, the goals per game. And in, in a lot of these games, each, what I, what's really impressed me, and you're going to see them up close at Madison Square Garden against the Panthers. But what's impressed me about them is they're dictating a lot of play. Mm -hmm. They're dictating. That's the way Peter Laviolette coaches. So he likes his teams to be on their toes, to dictate play. They've done that to this point so far. Yeah, they're off to a great start. Yeah. Good challenge tonight against the Florida Panthers. Biggie. There's another one for you. And this okay. was more the start of the season, right? Yeah. We're like, the Oilers will not get off to another slow start this year. I mean, that's impossible after last year. They know better. Mm -hmm. On second thought, maybe they will. I, I mean, they, <laughs> they, they didn't come out of the gate really great. And, uh, you know, they lose in overtime to Carolina the other night, blow a lead in that game. They that and game. they don't, you know, now the personnel is different. Like, yes. I, like I don't think, I, I think they got some challenges on defense. Yes. And I think that's going to be really, you know, losing Broberg to me is a big loss. I would have figured out a way to keep that young man yeah. in Edmonton. But their defense is a little light right now. And you go all the way to the end, sometimes it's hard to get that engine cranked up again, that urgency engine. Mm -hmm. been a little bit of a struggle, so it seems like they are kind of out to a slow start again. Yeah, and oddly enough, their power play, which was NHL best in history last year, hasn't looked like itself so far this season. So all of that to say, yes, for the Edmonton Oilers, again, truth be told, I got to stick by it. I had them coming out of the West this year yeah, okay. for this season, All facing right. off against the Rangers. And listen, right? They, why, they may very well. And that might happen. Yeah. However, I, I will echo they need some help on the back end. Yes. They have to fortify their blue line. I don't know when that's going to happen, whether it's an early in season or a late trade deadline deal, but they have to do something on their back end to fortify it for sure. I do like the addition of the veterans and Arvidsson, should he stay healthy, and of course Jeff Skinner and those guys to bolster their top six. But I can tell you this now, and I'll put it on Twitter shortly, I'm told Evander Kane is on track for an early 2025 return. Oh, okay. Well, that's good news. And that's a they big piece them. for them. Yep. They could use him because he does things that they don't have a lot of in their group. Yeah. Especially with no Fogel now. Brings a little physicality. That's a little, right. A little offensive jam. Exactly. I can remember in a game against Van last year in a playoff game, and that mm -hmm. was a tight series, won seven games. Mm -hmm. Van had tied it up late. Puck gets dumped in. Kane goes in and just knocks the daylights out of somebody, creates a turnover, and they score, and they win the game yeah. in regulation still. I mean, those are the things. Those are the things that uh, you're right. They don't have some of those. The th they don't have some of the attributes that he brings. Mm -hmm. So that'll be great for them to get him back in the lineup. All right, we got we got one more sure, for you. Take your time. And I will take my time. We got Thank time. You. We got time. Where the, are we going? The Avalanche. Yeah. Are in for a long season. That was the first thought, right? right they right. lost these games, a struggle. Guys are out of the lineup, but now, on second thought. They have won three in a row, and all yeah. of a sudden they're finding their way again. Sure. So uh, the Avalanche took advantage of a little bit of a soft schedule there with uh, one of the games against San Jose, playing against Anaheim, but you got to win those games. Yeah. And they did that, and uh, here they are now at three and four, looking to get to 500 tonight. Yeah, you got to win the games that are on the docket for yeah. sure, especially the ones that you know you should win. Those are the ones you got to get those points. Now, with that being said, overall, are they playing better? Yes. Kale McCarr has been money, by the way. Led the league in, in points uh, for the way Kale McCarr plays on the back end. You know what you're getting from Nate McKinnon. Uh, we just spoke to Kale McCarr the other night, actually Wednesday night post-game. He was kind enough to join us, and he just said, hey, we like what, what we're doing now, but we can improve our game. He's a student of the game. He's one of the best. He's had one of the best starts to any career in league history for a defenseman. But what I would also say, you've got Ratnan up front. They have the horses, but the key for me is how they defend. And if their goaltending plays the way it should, and Eustace Adenin played well when he's gotten into the net, yeah. so maybe that affords them a little bit more time for Georgiev to get his game back together. And they're in Utah tonight in Salt Lake to take on the Utah Hockey Club, who are dealing with some injury issues mm -hmm. themselves. We'll see if the Avalanche can take advantage. So uh, there it is. There it is. There you have it. Thought. So we'll, uh, we'll dive back into this from time to time throughout it. the season. Thanks again. Kyle, when we come back, hey. On first thought, second thought, third thought, the Jets are undefeated. <laughs> they haven't lost or six, a perfect 6 and 0. We'll talk about Winnipeg. Can they get it going again to get the seven? Talk about the Jets next, first shift. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the best point percentages, Whoa. the best point percentages in the league thus Whoa. far this season. The Jets, perfect. The Rangers and Flames, excellent. And the Capitals and Wild doing their thing as well. So uh, let's look at a couple more of these teams that are playing well. We'll start with the Jets. They're a perfect 6-0 so far. They are in Seattle to take on the Kraken tonight. So I ask you, 
can they make it seven? Yeah. You know why? Why? Complete. <laughs> they're like a great daily multivitamin. They're complete. Uh, They've got every element working for them right, right now. Right now they do. Four check has been great. Josh Norrissey, as I always call him, has been a baller on the back end. Cole Perfetti starting to cook as a youngster. Mark Shifley looks great. Not to mention, of course, so does Nikolai Ehlers and our man Kyle Connor missed the 35 goals in his sleep. They can play it physical with my man Adam Lowry in that line. They're playing well defensively. Every facet of their game, Scott O'Neill deserves a lot of credit. Him and the staff. That was a you know a big transition moving on from Rick Bonus to Scott O'Neill getting another opportunity behind the bench. He's done a great job. I love the way the Jets are playing. All right. Well, hey, Jordan Everly's been hot for the crack. He has so been. Yep. New captain there, them, too. But four and three. True. Not a bad start for Danny Balls. Yeah. And company. Yeah. We'll props to them. Put a dent mm. in that Jets juggernaut. Yes. As we go into that one tonight. Big Let's matchup. talk about the Minnesota Wild because they are in Tampa to take on the Lightning. Now, they're 4 and 2, but they have not trailed, trailed at, all. at all this season. The two losses in overtime shootout. And so now, if they can get the lead tonight and win again, and not trail, they'll match an NHL record. The Boston Bruins, 69-70. Boston Bruins were able to accomplish that. Big, bad Bruins, exactly. Bobby Orr, Phil Esposito, and yeah. company. But uh, Minnesota, off to a good start so far. I don't know if how much of this I can attribute to our guy John Hines and the staff, but this one little nuance that I learned a little early, later early in my career, when guys would say, guys, we don't want to chase games. Weeksy, don't let up the first one. We don't want to chase games. If we if we can start neutral or start up, we increase our probability of winning. And the Minnesota Wild have done that to their credit. Marco Rossi has been outstanding so far. Kuro Kaprizov has mentioned, one of the best players on the planet. Zuccarello, Zuccarello, Zuccarello has been great for them too. Four goals. Four goals. And all things being equal, Joel Erickson Eck, as we know, has been really good. Uh, I, you want, let me take you into this quickly if we have it. All right. I remember doing their game, game 82, last year for ESPN, and it was Seattle and Minnesota. And I'm going to tell the fans, bring them inside. Bring them in. After the game, I was down, went down with the players and family area. Everybody for the Minnesota Wild was dejected. It looked like they yeah. lost the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And I spent some time with the Coach Kaprizov after the game, three, four hours. And he's like, I love Minnesota. We, this can't happen to us. This can't happen to us. We've got to be back. We've got to be better. We have to do. To their credit, they've been great to start this season. Yes, they have. So they've turned that frustration from last year, no playoffs around, into where they are right now. That's really impressed me. And, and you know, Tony Granato mentioned to me yesterday, mm -hmm. he's been around Ryan Hartman. Ryan mm -hmm. Hartman's an Illinois mm -hmm. guy, right? That's right. He said, he said yeah, the bad taste. Just yes. The same thing. He picked up on the same thing. Interesting. So they're off to a good start. Mm -hmm. Caprice off 10 points. John Hines. Mm -hmm. He did wonders with, with Taylor Hall, had an unbelievable year. He's good with star players. Got that right. He's playing them. I mean, he's playing a lot of minutes right now. That's it. Each, he wants it, though. Time? Do we have time? He wants it. No. Love, no time? No time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to get Calgary. Go. Oh, I want to okay. get the Flames. All right, let's they're get playing the tonight base. against Carolina. That mm -hmm. should be a good game. But 5-0-1, we had Ryan Huska on yesterday. The good job coach. with that yesterday. Thank you, you very much. Yeah, and, like, what do you think of the Flames? So I just love the way they're playing. They're battling. They, they rallied to tie that game the other night late. I, I just – fun story right now. Fun story, some great human stories with Kirkland, among others. Mm -hmm. Dustin Wolf, ah <laughs> the Wolf Man, the Werewolf has of, been, yeah, the Werewolf well, of Calgary, of London. He's, he's right. He's been really good. So too has been the Dan Vladar. On there, the late Warren Zevo. Absolutely, I like I, the fact that they're just. You know what I noticed when I'm seeing the, the Flames play this year, and I haven't seen for the last couple of years. I'm seeing the joy and the spirit of how they're playing. Yeah, and they're playing together as a group. They realize, hey, we might not have the deepest, most talented roster. However, when we play together in groups of five, when we're in the right spots, when we compete and do all these things, we put ourselves in a good spot to get points. And they've done that, 5-0-1. So I didn't see it coming, but I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with how they've played to this point. Yeah, and they'll have their hands full with, with Carolina tonight. Carolina's still a, a dangerous team. We saw it the other night in Edmonton. And Marty Natchez. <laughs> Electric! Electric. He is electric. Fun to He's watch. He's electric. I'm a big Marty Natchez fan. I go back to that stadium series game down there at Carter Finley Stadium in yep. Carolina. Yep. He was dancing. I like to I like his game. I know they want sometimes a little more straight away, but Marty Natchez can do some special Fun things. Yes. Fun to I'm watch. I'm a big fan no of his too. Question about yeah, yeah. it. So the Calgary Flames try to keep it rolling tonight at home against the Kings. When we come back, hey, Luke Hughes!
Help us on the way. Luke Hughes looks like he's going to be in the lineup for the Devils tonight, along with Brett Pesci. So two defenders back in for the Devils as they take on the Detroit Red Wings this evening. We'll talk about the Devils next on First Shift. Here's a look at the early season comparison board between the Dallas Stars and the Boston Bruins. They meet in Boston tonight, first of their two meetings. And you can see there the Stars 5-2, and two, but uh, losing in Buffalo on Tuesday night. And the Bruins 3-3-1, three, three, and one, and they had some struggles finishing up a road trip. Took it on the chin against the uh, Utah Hockey Club. So tonight we're not going to get the Ottinger-Swayman matchup, yeah. right? Two great young American goalies both played college hockey in the yeah. Northeast. Casey DeSmith will be in, also an American goalie, mm -hmm. but he'll be in for Dallas tonight, Swayman in for Boston. But you look at this matchup tonight, both teams, I think, are a little itchy after losing a couple games here. Yeah, and I would say specifically the Boston Bruins. And, and what one thing that I want to see for Boston is they've been so consistent for the last 15 years as a franchise, but I just want to see a lot of the noise just dissipate, mm -hmm. just get back to their clinical, focused, a deliberate style of play, the the selfless style of play, and everything just operating smooth and quiet. There's been a lot of noise since prior to the season. Yeah. Let's just quiet that down, put the fire extinguishing blanket <laughs> on that, extinguish the flames. Then, as far as the Dallas Stars, the Dallas Stars have gotten off to a great start. I like what I've seen from them. Uh, Ege, I know you're bullish on them as well. Yeah, you have them I going do. to Stanley yes, Cup Finals, if not mistaken, yes, right? Yes, I do. I think they can win it. Yeah, so they're a very complete team as well in every phase of the game. I love that Matt Duchesne is back there yeah. because he's a very good fit there yep. in their group. Smart, yeah. skilled. But a smart move to keep him. That's right? a big time. Make it work. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And smart for him to stay there. Yeah. That's a good fit for him. I don't see any blemishes in Dallas's game. I really like their game right now. You know, the only thing I'd say, Miro Haskin at no points so far. Odd. That's weird. Through that's, seven. Is that a typo? That's, yeah, I know. That, hold on. 17 shots. Yeah, that's but, odd. I mean, I guess that happens. He's so sometime, good, but, but that's odd. Yeah, it yeah, is because he's really such odd. a difference maker for the Dallas Stars. Agreed. So uh, should be a good one in Boston on yeah. the Dallas Stars and the Boston Bruins. Uh, in Detroit, the uh, Red Wings are hosting the New Jersey Devils. Red Wings found a way to win Oof. at UBS Arena against the Islanders. The other night. They had 10 shots on goal. Patrick Kane scored the only goal. I think yeah. you talked to him yeah, talk to on him the post Frozen game. Frenzy there mm -hmm. at ESPN the other night after the game. But Red Wings are trying to keep things moving in the right direction. Devils. I mean, that was an ugly loss to Tampa They're Bay Tampa. on uh, Tuesday night. Gave eight goals. Yeah. They're looking to kind of reset tonight. There's been a good start to the season, mm -hmm. minus that one. And uh, they get a couple of defensemen back tonight. Luke Hughes and Brett Pesci. Pesci, of course, a free agent, comes over from Carolina. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's two big horses Massive. to put on that blue line. Massive. That's great news for the Devils fans. Yeah. The fact you get Luke Hughes, one of the bud a budding star in this league, like obviously his brother, both brothers, his teammate, and then of course Quinn Elton Van. Yep. But his ability to skate, get pucks out of the D zone, make plays in the offensive zone. So this will be massive to get him back. Make no mistake about it. Also getting Pesci. I love the signing. Steady, dependable, predictable, uh, trustworthy type defenseman that you can play in any situation. That should help stabilize things for their group. I like those pairs. The slotting. I like the slotting yeah. really nicely. And there you see Brett Pesci. Uh, mm. New York kid, playing in Carolina yep. for all those years. Right. Now comes up to play with Devils. Happy to see him in the tri-state area. Absolutely. And just like you said, I mean, a steady performer. And like Luke Hughes, we know he's going to skate. He's going to take chances. Pesci can kind of Stabilize be it. that guy to kind of, you know, help out, be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And I like that. Well, same thing with Dylan and Hamilton. That's right. And then Siegenthaler and uh, Kovacevic is a, is a kind of a similar pairing. Yeah. So I like the depth. And they got Casey in the minors We're, waiting to come back at right. some point. I mean, they, this is a team that has eight, nine, ten defensemen within their organization that could probably play if needed. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. That's a great thing. And the Nemitz, who we saw over there. That's right. I am forgetting about right. Nemitz. Right, Shamal Nemitz, who's not, not even, even in tonight. the lineup tonight. Yeah. So, so if I'm looking. Number two overall pick. Crazy, right? So if you're looking. Years old. If I look at that, if that group of D, it's so much better. Yeah. But now for them, we know, because we've seen them up close now, yeah. and we've been impressed with them, but that game against Tampa, hey, boys, look. We can skate with anybody. We can make plays with anybody. We can score with anybody, but we need to defend. Yeah. Got to tighten it up. We got to tighten it up. Let's take care. There's no sense in us going out and getting Markstrom. We got Jake Allen. Yeah. We have good goaltender. We can't blame that on that anymore now. Yeah. Now we got to make sure as a team that we're attentive to the details on the D side 
and let's get some quick exits and go have fun play on the offensive end. Yeah. And when we don't have it, let's regain it again. You know, one odd thing for the Devils, they haven't played well at home yes. in the last little, a couple of years, yeah. really. Even when they had a good year, they were just average at home. And two performances, the last two at home, Washington, they gave up six, they lose in overtime, and then mm -hmm. eight to Tampa. It's weird. It's weird. And, and look, this should be advantage Devils, and I'm going to say why. When the opposing teams come into play in Metro New York, and I know this has been home for almost 50, 16 years for us yeah. now, and I've played for all three teams here in the area. When opposing teams come into Metro New York, they're jazzed to play the Rangers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Let's go, boys. Yeah. World's most famous arena. Everybody's jazzed, typically. Yeah. And then sometimes you can get a letdown when they go to now beautiful UBS, not the Coliseum anymore. Yeah. And or when you go to beautiful Prudential Center, yeah. take advantage of that. Yeah. Jump out early, quick start. Get Stay on. out of the box. Use your speed. Get on opposing teams and make that. Because whenever the Devils, throughout their history, when they've been awesome and we're their best team in the, in the league, and I know this even when I played for them, it was a big point of pride hearing Marty and Jay Pandolfo and Patrick Heliash and everybody in the dressing room, Bobby Holik. Colin White, hey guys, we got to defend home, home ice. Yeah, we got it. Home yeah. ice matters to us, yeah. and that's got to matter. That's a good, good point by you. So there. We'll see. They're on the road tonight in Detroit. We'll see if they can get it done. And before yeah. we go, what do we have? hey, the LA Kings are finally going to be at home. Ah. They open their home schedule tonight against San Jose. So yeah. good for the Kings. Seven games on the road to start the season. It's been up. It's been down. But three, two, and two is not bad when you consider no Drew Doughty. Yeah. And they've had some goaltending issues. Yeah, that's fair. I was in touch with Rob Blake yesterday. Uh, at this point, Darcy Kemper is starting to practice with the team. He's near, getting closer to a return. But for the LA Kings, ultimately, considering that, that long road trip, they're in a pretty good spot. I think they're going to have a little bit of a push now that they return home to LA. Yeah, I mean, and let's face it. I mean, it's nice to have San Jose come in. San Jose's been struggling. They're yeah, rebuilding. They Celebrini's yeah. still out of the mix. He yeah. played the first game and has been out. He's going to be out, looks like, another week or so. So mm -hmm. for the LA Kings, take advantage yeah. of home ice. Good to see them Gotta back. The last team to have a home opener in the yep. NHL this year. Some building issues going on in L.A. They're working through. It was planned that way, mm -hmm. so we'll see how they make out tonight at home. Weeksy, that's it for us. That's it for us. That's it for us. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you out there. Thank you. NHL Now is coming up next. As for us at First Shift, we'll be back tomorrow. Come join us tomorrow. We'll talk about more hockey. That's what we do here. See ya.